Joining me this week on Market Down Live, a week that we should be watching the Masters and have a lot, a lot of fun doing that. Well, how about the next best thing? Let's get a guy who's actually won the tournament. Joining me is 1987 Masters champion Larry Mize. How you doing, Larry? Mark, I'm doing good. How about yourself? <laughs> We're doing all right. I was curious, you there in uh, Columbus, Georgia, your longtime uh, home there now. Uh, how's everything going during this uh, lockdown shelter in place? What are you guys been up to? You know, it's been uh, it's been a time where Bonnie and I've just tried to get some things done around the house and the yard. Um, you know, I'm, I'm I'm very fortunate. You know, I enjoy hunting and fishing, so that's a good way to social distance. I go like I went Monday. I went fishing by myself, and uh, my oldest son David and I will go turkey hunting. I love the turkey hunt, so uh, just uh, using the time to enjoy the family and uh, just have some downtime, and you know, doing some doing some Bible study with some fellow tour players to try and really you know just keep our uh, faith strong and uh, continue to remind myself what's really important. That's great. And this week, uh, Holy Week, obviously Easter uh, is, is something we uh, love to celebrate. A lot of times you're celebrating Easter at the Masters, but you didn't make that journey west, uh, or excuse me, east from your home in Columbus to Augusta. How odd is that to not be at a place that you've played at since 1984? And before that, being born and raised in Augusta, you've been there many times before even playing as a participant. Well, it really is, Mark. It's, it's very weird. I mean, you know, I guess I'm getting used to it because it's been, you know, coming on for a while with this pandemic that we have. But uh, it is very strange. You know, you turn on the TV and they're having replays of uh, Masters and a lot of information. And not to be going there right now is, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of sad in a way. But, uh, you know, it's just it is what it is. And we need to make sure we keep, keep this uh, pandemic from getting any worse and get that curve to slow down. But uh, it is. It's strange not to be going to Augusta this week. I, I, miss, I miss not being there. Having uh, all these things canceled, March Madness, Masters, all these things moved, it kind of just tells us that this is very uh, important that we all stay at home and you're doing your part. What do you think, though, about uh, them announcing recently that maybe we're going to play in November? What do you think about that? And if we do play in November, how different is the golf course going to play? Well, that's a good question. I mean, obviously, when I heard the announcement the other day, I was very excited. I mean, I'd love to still get it in this year sometime. Uh, so that was an exciting announcement. Um, obviously, it's still conditional on how things go with the pandemic. But um, I think it should be similar. I was talking to my dad, who's in Augusta. He said they, after it came out, they were comparing the weather, you know, back and forth. And it, going by history, it could be just slightly cooler in November than April. But I think it'll be fairly similar. You know, by that time, the rye grass should really be a good solid base because it's late enough in the year. I think when they were thinking about holding in October, it might have been a little early for the rye grass. But I think the rye grass should be in there really well. Um, they shouldn't have any trouble getting the greens to the firmness and speed they want because, you know, the nights will be cooler and that'll help the greens as far as that goes. So I think it, it could be a little different. But trying to make it the same, I think it's a good time to have it. And the conditions could be very similar to April. And if there's a place that can figure it out, I know Augusta National, with all their resources, they'll figure it out. So there's going to still be azaleas blooming? Uh, no, there shouldn't be any azaleas. <laughs> so that'll be the different part. There won't be the azaleas blooming, so that'll be, uh, that'll be different. But I mean, it's a beautiful place, but it'll, that will, that will it'll look different without uh, the flowers blooming and everything, the azaleas and the dogwoods and everything. So that, that will be different. Now, before we move on from the Masters, we've got to talk about 1987. Of course, i got to reminisce with you because what an incredible year that was. I mean, coming off the heels of Jack Nicklaus winning his sixth green jacket in 1986, and then you've got the players that were involved in that 87 Masters with Greg Norman, arguably the most popular golfer at the time, Seve Ballesteros, Ben Crenshaw, and then the Augusta native, Larry Mize. I think something that people forget a lot about is that birdie you made on 18 to just get into the playoff. Beautiful 9-iron. I'm sure you don't hit 9-iron into 18 at a cost anymore, but beautiful 9-iron <laughs> in about four feet and made the putt. No, I may hit 9-iron my, for my third shot if I hit a bad drive <laughs> catch the trees, you know. <laughs> no, but thank you. That, that, that's, I'd say that the chip shot's a great memory, but that birdie at 18 is a great memory because, you know, when you need to birdie the 72nd hole in any tournament, much less a major, and you're able to pull that off. That, that was very special for me to birdie there. And, uh, you know, it played a lot different than getting that nine iron in there. But I was, uh, I was shaking in my boots over that six-footer, but I was sure glad it went in. And uh, that's a great memory to make that birdie on 18. That's a sweet way to finish the, uh, the regulation part of the tournament. 
And then, of course, the the, the pitch in was just incredible. And, and you wearing that shirt, too, with the three different colors of purple certainly gave uh, that some, uh, some notoriety going forward. We'll never forget the shirt. But I'm curious about the pitch shot. Uh, you know, a couple of bounces in, you walked up to the green to kind of take a look at it. Did you ever consider going a little bit more upstairs with it? Or was it the, maybe a little bit more of a conservative shot to go with a couple bouncer in the fairway before it hit the green? Well, that's a great question. Um, that was one of the greatest things about the shot. As you know, in playing golf, the worst thing you can do is be undecisive not totally committed to the shot. And there was only one shot I could play in my mind at that point. I had to play a little pitch and run, landing it short and uh, letting it run to the green. Because, you know, in playing there, you know, we practice that shot with that sticky rye around the greens. So anything lobbed onto the green, because all I had was a 56 degree sandwich back then, anything on the green, I think the greens were so hard and fast because we were only three under par. It was playing very hard. Uh, for the week, we, only, we were tied at three under. So I felt anything that landed on the green, flew on the green, was going to go in the water. So I had to play a pitch and run, landing it short, and then letting it bounce up there and roll to the green, roll to the pin. And, you know, I picked out a spot, and it turned out good. And, you know, I think the other thing that, that made it better that people don't think about is, is in a playoff, it's do or die. You know, if I've got that shot in regulation, my, my thought is I probably get it on the green short of the hole, make the putt or two putt for bogey or whatever and move on because I have more holes. But in a playoff, you got to stay, you got to stay aggressive. So I think that helped as well. I had to put the, a good shot, put the pressure back on Greg. Um, he still had a 40 footer for birdie. So if I could put the pressure on him, you know, he doesn't have a, an easy birdie putt. So that was kind of my thought. And uh, I hit the spot and it turned out okay. Great advice there from a Masters champion about being decisive, too. And when you think about it, too, you only have about a minute or so to make that choice. You walk up to your ball, see it, and the magnitude of the situation. You don't have a whole lot of time to make that call. Obviously, you made the right call and uh, ended up being uh, an incredible memory forever at the Masters. And with that, one of the coolest perks is you get to go back there every single year, and you have not missed a single one. I'm really curious, but something I haven't been a part of is the Champions Dinner and what it's like to rub elbows with guys like Gene Sarazen and Sam Snead, stuff like that. Well, it really is. That is a, a day I look forward to. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm miss, missing that this year. And hopefully we will get to do it in November. But uh, speaking of Gene Sarazen, early on after I got in the, in the Champions Dinner, um, Gene Sarazen needed to ride back to his hotel. And I said, I'll take him. You know, I said, I'll, I'll take him. I was, I was pumped. I said, I'm driving Gene Sarazen back to his hotel, you know. So to get to be with those guys, I mean, it goes back to Henry Pickard and Herman Kaiser and Gene Sarazen, uh, Sam Sneed, you know, Byron Nelson. I mean, to get to be with those guys that I didn't really know. You know, I knew, I knew Jack and Arnold, but I didn't really know them. And to get to hear them and Jackie Burke, hear some of his great stories, it is just so great to, to hear their stories and, learn a lot about what it was for them. I remember Henry Pickard one time said, I don't recognize this place. You know, it was so manicured compared to when he played it. It was just, he said, I don't, it doesn't look the same out there to him. So it was so much fun. And it still is to be with those guys. I'll never forget one time early on after I'd won, I said, I need to stand up and say something. And I'm, I'm kind of nervous, but I, I wanted to say something. I just wanted to thank everybody for coming back. Cause you know, it, it means a lot especially to everybody, but especially the younger players, which I was at the time, to have all those guys come back and we get to be with them for that time Tuesday night. And it's just a very, very special night. And uh, it's one of the, you know, nights I look forward to every year. Special night there and, and special time too with the family. I'm sure you got some memories with uh, your three boys and with Bonnie uh, out there, maybe the part three tournament or just kind of just being in Augusta as a family. Well, it really is. It's, it's kind of like a, family reunion you know my whole family except for me I'm in Columbus but my dad and brother and sister mom they're in Augusta so you know we kind of have see everybody we get together and we'll have dinners at night and it's, it's a lot of fun and so that, that's that's great get to see all the nieces and nephews and um, and then the boys did you know my three boys you've got three boys um, mm -hmm. we uh, they caddy for me in the par three which was a was a fun experience I've got pictures on the wall back in the hall of them Caddy for me, they got the jumpsuit with the number and everything. So uh, it's a very special time. You know, and you always let them hit a putt out there. You know, when you're on the putting green, on the green during the tournament, you let them hit a putt in par three. So uh, 
just some great memories and, uh, you know, there continue to be memories. It's something that I look forward to and I think they look forward to every year. We get to be there and uh, we get to spend the week together and uh, it's very, very special. It was special for me too. The first time I got to play in the Masters, I reached out to you in 2011 beforehand. I said, hey, I want to play a practice round with you. And and you said, sure. You named the time. We went out and played, uh, I think it was Tuesday afternoon. You also advised me on that, how it gets kind of crazy. Everyone's all excited to get out there in the morning. Let's play Tuesday afternoon. And and you, DA Points, Zach Johnson, myself went out and played. And I remember getting to the 16th hole for the uh, traditional skip the ball across the pond thing. I don't know if you remember my first couple of attempts, did not hit any water. I had you and, and the DA and Zach just laughing uh, your tails off at me. Like, Mark, you got to hit a little lower. Don't hit it so hard. I almost killed a few people behind the green. It, it is a fun thing. I, I tell you, the, the whole key is, for me, you got to put that ball on the down slope. You know, if you have it back on the flat, it's real easy to do what you're saying. But, hey, we've all done it. I mean, there are many times I didn't get it over the water. I just plopped it in the water. So, uh, but it's a fun tradition that the fans really like. And uh, that, that's fun memories of being out there with you. And uh, it's just, uh, you know, there's so many things special about Augusta. And that's just continues to be one of them. And uh, it's just, uh, it's great fun. What do you have plans this week? Are you going to have a little watch party on YouTube? I mean, you and Bonnie put the put the coverage on. Or maybe you got an old VHS tape. You can pop in the VCR and, and watch it. Maybe a Zoom call with the whole family to, to relive 1987? You know, uh, maybe I should put the tape in and watch it. That's one thing. I don't watch that enough. That might be fun to do. But, uh, you know, just kind of normal stuff. David and I are going to go turkey hunting in the morning. You know, mm -hmm. I got – you know, whenever he can get off, because he's a lawyer in town, he's still working, so uh, we'll do that. But uh, just, I'll get with him this weekend. We may uh, be with, because David and his wife and our grandson are in town here. The other two boys are in Augusta, and one's in Baltimore now, working a little bit. But uh, So we'll get with him this weekend, spend some time. But just really kind of a slow week. Probably won't do a whole lot as far as the Masters go, and uh, just hope we get to do that in November. Yeah, certainly. And uh, you're still playing on the PGA Tour Champions. I mean, you're not slowing down anytime soon. A big full schedule last year. Already played four or five events so far. Already a top 10 in 2020. Uh, what motivates you to keep playing out there? You know, I just, I love to compete. You know, I love the game of golf. And even when I retire, I'll still keep playing. But, you know, I just love the competition. And it just, you know, I, I'll I may go hit some balls today. I just, I just really enjoy it. I guess the competitive spirit still, still burns. It doesn't quite burn as bright as it used to. I keep trying to fan that flame to get burn a little brighter, but it's hard to get that thing going sometimes. But I do enjoy it. And one of the biggest things I enjoy and I think that I'll miss is the camaraderie of seeing everybody. Um, like, it, it's fun to see you today. I haven't seen you in a while. So mm -hmm. Zoom is great to get a chance to see you. But, you know, the fellowship that I have out there with, with my fellow pros out there, that's, that's what I probably will miss. I mean, the playing, you know, I'll, the competitiveness kind of goes away where you're not playing quite as well. But I'm trying to keep that going as long as I can. So uh, that's, that's kind of what keeps me going, just the competition and enjoy competing with the guys. Yeah, competition and then the friendship that uh, certainly uh, you have with all those guys. Uh, certainly something we miss. So, so keep, continue to keep playing as long as you can. And on Market Down Live, what we like to do, kind of close out each show is uh, talk about a swing thought from our guest and something that maybe has worked for you more often uh, than not in the past. Maybe something you fall back to when things you know, you're struggling a little bit with. What's the one thing that you can think of that you go back to more often than not? You know, that's, that's a great thing. I mean, I think one of the things uh, that I think of is just, you know, good rhythm and tempo. Uh, I know people think about that with my swing, but, but don't be in a hurry. Uh, I know there are times when I get in trouble is when I don't quite complete my backswing and I get in a hurry coming down. So I guess my tip would be make sure that you complete your backswing and don't be in a rush to get down that ball. Just let that thing club, let the momentum build and have good rhythm and tempo and uh, complete your backswing and that'll be the easiest way to have that good rhythm and tempo. If you don't complete that backswing, it's very hard to have it. So that's something that I, I think about. And matter of fact, I've been thinking about this this year, which has actually helped me play a little better and and uh, get, get some better weeks this year. Sounds like great advice uh, for life, too, really. Be patient. Don't be in, in such of a rush. I feel like this time, too, it's, it's kind of given all of us maybe a little bit of a reset button in life. And uh, great advice there on, uh, on your rhythm and tempo and completing your backswing, Larry. Really appreciate the time. And uh, you take care there. And I know you got another grandbaby on the way. 
very soon. So good luck with being a grandparent once again. And uh, look forward to seeing young PGA Tour champions, hopefully sooner rather than later. Sounds good, Mark. I really enjoyed being with you. You and your family stay safe. All right. Thanks, Larry. All right. Take care.